Let's go, let's go. What's up everyone? This is the Bachelor Chef. I'm here to teach you how to cook for yourselves so that you don't end up eating ramen every day, dying of heart failure when you're 40. The first thing that we're gonna do is give you a rundown of equipment that you're gonna need. So that begins with a knife. You're gonna want an eight to 12 inch chef's knife. Anything smaller isn't gonna cut it, so don't kid yourself. Uh, some other knives that you might find useful will be a boning or fillet knife for butchering meat, a bread knife for cutting bread, a paring knife for cutting small vegetables and things like that, and a honing steel to keep all of your blades sharp. Some of the tools that you're going to find useful would be a wooden and slotted spoon, spatula, tongs, ladle, whisk, kitchen scissors. Anything else is not really necessary for a beginner. Pots and pans and other cookware. You could spend a whole lot of money here if you're not careful, but I assume that you have credit card debt like me, student loan debt like me don't have a lot of money coming in, like me, and are just generally bad with money, like me. So here are the absolute basics that you'll be able to cook any recipe with. You've got your skillet, smaller non-stick skillet, saucepan, heavy duty fryer, and a stock pot. Some other things that are good to have but not strictly necessary would be a meat thermometer, Measuring cups, measuring spoons, vegetable peeler, can opener, cheesecloth, kitchen string, which I do not have at the moment, and a scale. If you are into baking, a scale is upgraded to a necessity. Next thing we're going to be doing is going over a few techniques, starting with keeping your blade on your knife sharp. It's called honing. Got a honing steel right here. You hold your knife like this. And what you want to do is get about a 15 to 30 degree angle to the steel. Drag it all the way over from the bolster to the tip like this. Then do the same for the other side. Don't feel bad if you can't do it fast because that will come the time. You don't want to maul your hands. Once you think you're done, take your thumb and gently test to see if you've made your blade sharper or not. If you've had too severe of an angle, you could have taken part of the blade off, which will shorten the length of your knife. And if you did it sort of like this, then you just dull it, and there's nothing worse than working with a dull knife. You might end up hurting yourself. Next thing is how to chop and dice. Dice is your basic cut. It's basically cutting things into small cubes. Here's an onion. What you do is you take off the very top. And then cut it in half this way. When you're cutting, you want you don't want to go straight down. That'll dull your blade, you want to go through. You want to hold the object that you're cutting like this with a claw grip so that when you're cutting, you shave your knuckle hair instead of, you know. Don't want to send anybody to the emergency room. Next, you want to peel the paper off of the onion. Hold it 
so that the root is away from you. And make sure your lines down this way. You want to keep the root intact so that it can hold all of the onion in place for you. Then, get it so that the root is pointing at the knife and chop. For a small dice, you're looking about a quarter of an inch. You'll want to go slowly so that you're making sure that the cuts are the right size. If you have your cuts that are totally different sizes, they'll cook at different times, which is something you don't want. Half of your onion will be raw, the other half will be burned. Go through what you've just chopped to make sure that you didn't miss any big sections. of an onion. Next up is a mince. Here's a clove of garlic. What you do is you take the flat of your blade, put it on the garlic clove, smash it down a little bit so that you can take the paper off more easily. Then you take the root, slice it off, Get your claw grip going and slice as thin as you can. When you start running out of room, fold it up so that you can once again get your fingers out of the way, chop the rest of it. Now what you're gonna do is employ what people like to call the rock chop, which is where you take both hands and just as fast as you can. A mince is basically the smallest cut possible. So keep going until there aren't a whole lot of big chunks. If there are no big chunks, congratulations. You're a professional. Not really. And that's a mince of garlic clove. Next up is one of the most basic things that you can cook in the kitchen, is stock or broth. Uh, a lot of people might wonder why you should learn to cook something like this because you can get it in the supermarket in the box. But uh, I'm here to tell you that cooking your own stock has a few advantages. One, you save money. Two, this way you can say that you made the entire meal by yourself from scratch, basically bragging rights. And three, tastes way better than the bowling cubes or the stuff that you can get in the box when you do it by, your, by yourself. There are four different kinds of stock. What we're making here today is chicken stock. There's also vegetable, beef, and fish stocks. What you need for chicken stock is a chicken carcass. You can use one that's already been cooked. I have a raw one in here. You need Carrots, celery, and onion. You want to have twice as much carrot and celery as you do onion. You need thyme, parsley, bay leaves, peppercorns, and salt. Here's what you do. It's really simple. Throw your carrots in. Throw your celery in. Throw your onions in. Throw your peppercorns in. Put in your salt. Put 
Then you throw in your herbs. You can just throw them right in. What I'm gonna do is put them in this cheesecloth so that I don't have to strain them out later. I usually do only one or two bay leaves because they're pretty strong. Some parsley. And some thyme. Putting things in cheesecloth to get the flavor, but not the actual particle, is a method called a bouquet, and it's used pretty often in French cooking mostly. When they want the flavor in their soup, they don't want the actual herb. If it's too much like a stick, or they'll throw off the texture somehow. Then, you just take your sack pot and fill it with water. Leave it on high until it just starts to boil and then lower it to a simmer. Let it sit there for six to eight hours and you'll be good. You might be, you might be overwhelmed with feelings of extreme hunger because of the smell, but it is the price you will pay for having delicious, delicious stock. Stock's pretty versatile. You can use it in soups, you can use it in sauces, and once you get those two things down, you're really unlimited in the kitchen. <laughs>